All right, I'm really excited about this video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Code It Forward. You might be wondering, well, that has not, no Commerce Cloud or anything related to it. Well, it's actually a project that I've been working on with a couple of the community members and some of the Salesforce members. Uh, Tom and I have been working on this idea about making components available for the community uh, quicker uh, from a community-driven project. So what I'll be walking you through today is the overview and objectives of Code It Forward. Um, you know, and a little bit of a sneak peek here is that it gives you components in LWR that you can actually start using and customizing now, which we know is a limited commodity. Uh, and I'll actually be going through a couple of the components that are launching in the initial release uh, and exactly what those look and feel like. So stay tuned, we're gonna be going right into it now. Now, as it says on the screen here, the objective of this community project is to accelerate the availability of starter and reference components for customers and partners. So we've kind of come together as several community members to bring together kind of the starter components, components that are typically customized on the storefront to make implementation easier. So again, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do with this program here is to make it easier to use Commerce Cloud and customize. Because as partners and users of Commerce Cloud, uh, we've seen a lot of different uh, implementations of these components and we have to customize uh, these quite a lot in projects. And so we really wanna give back to the community and make it easier to customize. Now Salesforce has their repo they started, which has a handful of components. We have no plan of replacing that. That's gonna continue moving forward and they have a roadmap of what they're gonna be working on, which I could review at some point if you guys wanna see that. Um, but on our side, we're gonna be taking some of the areas they're not gonna to touch in the next 18 to 24 months and we're really gonna build these components out uh, quicker so that you can take these components and really customize them for your storefront. So without further ado, let's review some of the components that are gonna be available at launch of this repo. Number one is going to be the cart summary component. Now this cart summary component is used on both the cart and the checkout page to show pricing uh, for your cart and what you're gonna be purchasing. So it's a really key component there. Shipping instructions is something that's available actually right now if you go to the help and developer documentation. But I've actually updated this quite a bit to make it uh, more plug and play and I think a little bit better. So uh, that will be available as well. And last but not least, shipping methods. Now shipping methods is on the checkout page and it gives you the ability to choose your different methods. So a very key uh, component on the checkout. So I tried to uh, give a little bit from the cart side and a little bit from the checkout side to begin with. But this is only the beginning. We're going to have a ton of other components contributed by other partners and individuals in the space uh, that are really going to give quite a bit of horsepower uh, to this. So if you're interested in checking this out, go ahead and you know take a snap of the QR code here or go to the link down below. Both will send you to the same place. So before we go into the repo and take a look at the code and get in the instance, let's just do one more step down into the details here for these components. Uh, so again, the cart summary component, you can see it here on the right-hand side. This is actually on the cart page, uh, but I'm really excited about this component for a couple of reasons. One of the big ones is that it uses something called slots, uh, which I think are really powerful in LWR. Uh, and again, this component is focused on LWR. Um, so you can drag in uh, different text areas into the slots that are available. Uh, and you can see the dotted lines, those are the slots. Uh, so that's really powerful. And then it uses expressions to actually pull the cart information and show it on here. So no Apex required for this one. All of it is available through out of the box functionality in LWR uh, and Commerce Cloud. Uh, so we'll dig into this a little bit further here uh, in a moment. Then we have shipping instructions. Now this one's pretty straightforward, right? It's just adding instructions to uh, my cart. Um, but the way that it's constructed here is uh, pretty cool, I think. So it uses attributes to fill in the title and the placeholder values. Uh, it dynamically saves uh, these instructions that you're putting on here through the Commerce API. So that's a little bit of a change here. Salesforce is starting to get uh, more and more advanced in their Commerce Checkout API. Uh, and the, that REST API is uh, starting to come quite along. So I'm using that inside of uh, this component uh, to save everything. Uh, it's dynamic in the way that it actually functions so that when you're saving, it's disabling the field so you can't keep on changing it. Uh, and it's, you know, respecting the checkout state. So all the good practices are built into this component. 
And last but not least is the shipping methods. Now this component looks pretty straightforward, right? You know, it's just choosing between the different uh, methods, but this is a really good starter component uh, because it does all the, the functionality we talked about before about the using the APIs and uh, dynamic functionality. Um, but on top of that, it plugs right into your existing integration classes. So if you already had an integration class, it's gonna plug right into that. You can drag this on here and you can customize as needed from there. So with that, why don't we jump over to the repo real quick and let's take a look. Now, here we are on the repo. It's uh, called Salesforce Commerce Cloud Reference Components. Uh, you can see that we have a quick little blurb on here on our readme that talks a little bit about the intention of it and the fact that we're focusing on LWR and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you can also see what components are available right now. So the three I mentioned. And then down below, this is really important. These are the component documents. So you can actually open up cart summary and you can see what steps are needed to actually make this work. Uh, so you can see that in cart summary, it's deploying the code, it's navigating to cart and putting it on there, dragging in uh, the component into the page, and then using those text blocks to really um, put in the text values into the slots, uh, and then going through the, the typical publishing process and logging in to validate. Uh, so I tried to you know, put in all the installation steps and limitations here for each one of these, and they're a little bit different for each one. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. If you're interested in contributing, you know, you've been in the commerce cloud space uh, and you think that there's, you know, a component that you could attribute uh, to this uh, repo, uh, more than happy to uh, take a look at that. You can go up here and you can fork this, uh, make changes to your version of it, and then you can do a PR back into uh, the main uh, repo here. And we're happy to take a review of that and really, um, you know, bring back in some good knowledge from the community here. So to wrap this video up here, I just wanna go through each one of the components in a little more detail and show them in the Experience Cloud and um, in the actual logged in Experience site uh, so you guys have an idea what these components actually look like. So we're gonna start with our cart summary component. And if you go to the left-hand side over here into components and scroll all the way down, you can see we have a couple of components that are custom in my instance here. The ones you'll pay attention to are cart summary, shipping instructions, and shipping method. Uh, so cart summary, you drag over, and you can see this is my custom component on the right-hand side. Uh, and you can see that it defaults having in uh, all these expressions. These are expressions are available on the documentation site. Uh, so you can find those by navigating over into B2B Commerce and D2C Commerce underneath expressions and commerce components. And it will walk you through how to use these, but then you can go into uh, cart data expressions. And once this loads here, you can see all the ones that are available specifically for the cart page. So hopping back over here, you can see that uh, these are all slots as I mentioned earlier. So on the left-hand side, you can actually take a text area. So if I find a text block here and I can actually drag this into any one of these slots. And that's what makes this really powerful is that you know we're no longer doing this. Let me get rid of this real quick. We're no longer doing this just in you know attributes on the component. You can actually have attributes that are meaningful for the expressions, uh, but then inside of these text blocks, you have the full range of the text block is available. Now, the way I've built this, because I, th I think it's really important to make these components visible inside of Experience Cloud, is I've built some uh, default values in here um, so that you can actually preview this component without it failing on you uh, when you bring it into Experience Cloud. So if you look just a little bit further down, you can see that I have the standard cart summary component in here too. And it actually has a very similar functionality. It has slots in here, it has default values. Uh, so I've tried to mimic a lot of what they use in the standard one. So it's kind of a plug and play as much as possible. There is some functionality that is not available in the current version I have in here. And the really intent of this was try not, not to try to build out everything uh, that is available because there's actually quite a bit of functionality in a lot of these standard components. Um, so for instance, like the strike through price isn't available right now, but you could pretty easily take this component and then extend it to be able to do that. So why don't we hop over into the code real quick. Uh, I'm in my VS code now. I'm in the cart summary section. So you, you'll be able to download this straight from the Git repo, bring it into your project. Uh, and I'll start here on uh, the J JavaScript file. And you can see that we have a couple of slots that we've made available. Uh, this is the syntax of using slots. Um, and you can see that I have a method in here or a function in here called uh, is in site preview. That's really powerful because it allows me to tell if it's in preview or not. 
And if it's in preview, you can see that we're defaulting a lot of the values here to 100. So you can make this whatever you want to make it more accurate, um, but you can default the values by uh, this method. Um, and then on the metadata file, you can see we're bringing in these default expressions. These default expressions are uh, then used in variables across the HTML side of this uh, to actually display the values. Um, so you can see the value for cart subtotal is right here which maps back to the cart subtotal right here. Uh, so you can see this file is actually really easier. This component is uh, really easy and straightforward. Um, and then you'll be able to drag that in. And then once we go into our user, let's just get logged in real quick. If we go over into our cart section, you can see the values are exactly the same. Uh, just as the one, the standard one that is right here. This is the, the custom one I have. Uh, so you can see the expressions are uh, accurately displaying that value there. All right, so the next two are on checkout. Now, if I go to checkout and I scroll down, you can see I already have these uh, on the page layout here. Uh, but again, you can find them in the custom component section for shipping instructions and shipping method. Um, the configuration for these are really straightforward. Shipping method actually has no attributes uh, because it's all derived from the integration class. Uh, you can, in theory, could add a couple uh, if you wanted to and you wanted to customize this more. Um, but then on the shipping instruction side, uh, we have the title and we have the place order values here that you can customize and change uh, exactly what you want it to say. Uh, so those are pretty easy on the UI side. Again, I've done the same thing where I wanted to have a good preview in Experience Builder. So I've made some default values uh, so you actually can see everything properly here. But if you go back over to VS Code, uh, I'm going to actually show this from the shipping method side. Uh, the shipping method one is just a tad bit more complicated than the shipping instructions and definitely more than the cart summary. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we're doing is pulling information from the API. And you can see we have a class called Commerce Checkout here, uh, which I'll go to in one moment. And then we're making updates back to the Checkout API using um, the same class, but a different method in here. Um, so really we're handling a couple different situations here. You see we have some default values. You can also see that I have a, a similar type of experience here. We're saying, you know, if we're in preview mode here, um, right here, then we're feeding it default data. So this is the data structure that I have set up in this component. Um, and you can change any of this if you want the default value to be different. Uh, we're basically pulling from the API. Uh, to get the current available uh, shipping options based on the API. And then uh, we're transforming it so it is mapped correctly to how uh, the component is expecting it. Uh, and then we're making updates um, down here for handling any changes to the component when a person switches or not. Uh, and all of the rest of it is uh, switching through kind of the uh, standard modes and enabling and disabling that we reviewed in previous uh, videos. Um, so those are relatively straightforward. But if I hop over into uh, Commerce Checkout for a moment and excuse my red lines here, my prettier is uh, acting up right now. Uh, so this file is completely valid, but it doesn't like a couple things about it for some reason. Uh, but you can see in this section here, we have a couple of different uh, methods. We have our Get Commerce Checkout, we have our Update Commerce Checkout, and we have our Update Commerce Delivery Method Checkout. Um, so slightly different here because the payloads and the class structure is a little bit different. Uh, but what I've done is I've abstracted out the actual call itself into a commerce checkout callout, which handles the creating of the request and actually sending of the request. So all that is abstracted in and really clean. And really all that uh, happens here is we're specifying, you know, what method we're doing, a get or a patch, for instance. Uh, we're specifying uh, the community URL and uh, the actual web store ID. So we're doing all of that dynamically. Uh, so this will work in any instance you pull it into, but I've given a, a sample of what this actually looks like down below. Uh, and then if it has a payload, we're passing the payload uh, into uh, the, the create request uh, method from the commerce checkout callout. And it basically is going to uh, the standard commerce uh, API for uh, commerce slash web stores uh, slash checkouts active. And we're making updates to instructions uh, and or the shipping methods based on uh, whichever you know, component is actually calling it. Um, so from that standpoint, it's uh, really easy. When we go into uh, checkout, structure is pretty straightforward. It looks exactly the same as uh, the previous one. 
Uh, and you can see we do a little bit of, of updating here of like, you know, disabling the fields whenever we're making updates. Uh, you can see that's a little grayed out whenever it goes through that, uh, that update there. Um, so everything else is uh, really straightforward. So hopefully that's a good overview of all those components. Um, all the detail that is needed for the components are inside of uh, the Git repo, as I mentioned before. Uh, but feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about using these or getting started or, you know, if the documents need to be updated. Uh, but I'm actually going to be linking this video in the repo as well so that uh, you're able to kind of connect the dots between uh, how do I get set up and, and how do I bring it in the instance and what does it look like. But thanks for watching and hopefully this is a good addition to the community. And again, you know, if you have any ideas on components or you want to contribute, uh, feel free to comment or, you know, as I mentioned, fork the uh, the repo and, and continue developing. Uh, otherwise, I'll look for uh, the comments. Thanks everyone for watching.